always a good move to turn the camera on, I find. <laughs> uh, Nicola Cairn Cross here, and I'm back for my weekly checking in session. Uh, Got to confess, I didn't want to do it today, but I won't. I don't want to let you guys down. I don't want to let myself down, and that's uh, that's why I'm pushing forward with it. So, what's the format? Basically, it's the thing I do every week, but in written format. But I'm going to. I like to do a video, and um, it's what's worked what didn't and what's changing and there's quite a lot of good tips to share with you this week so i'm quite excited for this one in spite of the fact i had to really push myself to do it so what worked this week um i have been experimenting with google ads for youtube videos i was getting a bit sick of youtube not really showing my videos to anyone like literally two to eight ten twelve views so I thought, I wonder if it's possible to get your video, your new video in front of more people using Google ads. So you go in and you set up a campaign and you set up the campaign for conversion and you don't ask, you don't follow any of Google ads suggestions. You choose the bottom right hand se um, selection, which is don't follow any template. And then you go and you set up an audience and you set up an audience of the people who you want to watch your videos. And you set it up for conversions, as I say, and that means that it's going to you're going to pay not by how many people your video is shown to, but how many people actually take some action, i.e. click through to watch your video. And I was quite frankly expecting it to be pretty rubbish. I set a low budget, five pounds a day. And I chose my audience carefully by uh, interests and age. And then I went and got ChatGPT to create the, I, I chose my first three to five headlines myself. And then I fed those into ChatGPT because they also want you to put in 90 character headlines as well as the 30 character headlines and also a 90 character description. And um, basically they show different combinations of the three to five headlines and descriptions you choose. Uh, in, depending on which platform it's being shown on. And I haven't delved that deep into where it's being shown. So uh, they show your video. That's the thing. You use the URL of your video as the ad content and they show some of your video. And I found that you can actually show a video that's longer than three minutes. They do recommend three minutes or under, but all of my videos are longer. So um, unless I make a special uh what's the word, trailer for each video, then and then use the trailer in the Google ad, then um, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm trying to find out if it works. So first of all, what it's done is it shot my subscriptions to my channel through the roof, quite well through the roof. I'm being a bit dramatic there. Shot the subscriptions to my channel through the magic 1000 number, which I, I'm not joking, I've been trying to do for the last two years. But trying to get people to subscribe to your channel is really, really hard. But this traffic seems to do it. Um, I get likes on the videos and I get views on the videos. Now, yeah, they are watching. Some of them are watching. Not as many as would have done if they'd come organically, but some enough for watching so that it's not skewing the numbers too much. Because, of course, what you really want is you want a good conversion from um, view to a good conversion from click to view and then you want a good number of people watching so it has definitely pushed up my watch time um so i'm quite happy with it so far and what it does is it makes your channel not look so billy no mates when people arrive <laughs> so i'm running um how many new videos i think i'm putting up two new videos a week on the channel and i'm running um just a five pound a day budget to whichever one is the latest video so that's what i'm doing with that and that's working quite well um the other thing that's working is i've been using i used my new chat gpt bot kind of thing um that i've set up to appeal to my ideal clients so i've been through quite an extensive process of feeding information in about my ideal client and, and i'm very lucky because i've got several ideal clients that i can have in mind um, and then what you do is you tell ChatGPT to ask you questions to get a really so it gets a really good sense of who your ideal client is. Then you get it to tell you what your ideal client's um, concerns are and worries are. And then you can then get it to tell you that, you know, what kind of videos you could make for to allay, you know, to, to help the, your ideal client and then put that through 
the AdWord process to get more traffic to your videos. And what you do then is you have a call to action in the description and you mention the call, the call to action in the videos. Um, and you can even put the call to action in the first line of the description. I'm not doing that often because I like to SEO my videos so that after I finished running the ads, the videos still stand a chance of being picked up by the YouTube and then the Google search engine. So in order to SEO your videos properly, you need to run through a five step sequence, which I'm, I teach all my clients. So, yeah, so that's been really good. I mean, just the whole thing of writing five different headlines and five, three, five different descriptions would have stopped me in my tracks. I'm not very known for my detail, you know, attention to detail like that. So that's really worked getting um, ChatGPT to write those for me. And especially when ChatGPT has got my ideal client in mind and knows their problems, pains, worries and, and, and all that stuff. So really good. Now, if you want to get your ChatGPT, ChatGPT is hard to say, if you want to get your ChatGPT to do this for you, then do come on over to the website at nicolacarenext.com because I'm giving away my prompts on how to get chat GPT to do that. So I get you started with how, um, how it builds your ideal client scenario. And then there's a second giveaway, which I give to you if you go through the first one, because I like to make people jump through a few little hoops to get all the freebies. Um, and then I'm actually seriously thinking of putting on a one day virtual workshop of how you can use chat GPT and Google ads and you know YouTube to really get your business marketing going. So if you'd be interested in that, that then please just comment below saying, um, what, what, what we call it, we call it the AI workshop. If you're interested in a one day virtual workshop with um, learning sections and doing sections, then do let me know by putting AI workshop in the comments below. We'll see how much um, interest we get from that. Right, so all that worked. What else has happened here? Yeah, creating content. I mean, I've I've really cracked this now. Um, basically, I got ChatGPT to write me an outline of a blog post. Um, I wanted up to a thousand words. I wanted three recommended reading, and I want books, and I wanted uh, five practical action steps that people could take. And then what it did was it it chewed through the the problems and challenges that my ideal client is facing or feeling and created 14, um, I did 20, 20, can't remember. I think I did multiples of seven. So I did 14 blog posts addressing those challenges or problems. Um, and then I took them and I added to them. So I rewrote them. And oh, the other thing I did was I fed in my writing style to chat GPT on another document and I got it so it knows how I write. I, I fed in some blog posts, I fed in some transcriptions of videos and it now knows how I like my blog posts written. So it sort of roughed out some blog posts for me based on the because I'd never have done this. I just never have done it. It would have been too dull and too time consuming and I just wouldn't have done it. So it's actually creating content for me that I can then personalize and really, you know, if it suggests a book I don't agree with, I can change it. Uh, if it suggests an action step I don't like or, or I think could be improved on, then I can change it. So it's what it's doing is it's creating the sort of basic structure for me, which I can then take and make better. But it's doing it with my ideal client in mind and it's doing it based on my writing and speaking style, which is just unbelievable when you think about it. So I think that would be a very cool um, virtual workshop to do. Um, and it's it's you know it's giving me solid content every single week that I can make sure that I can put onto um, my blog and then I can read it out to create a podcast episode. And so it really is starting to gear up a, a machine of really good quality content geared to my ideal client. What didn't work this week? Oh, loads of things didn't work. <laughs> There's always loads of things when you're trying as much as I am trying different things. Um, my first thing that didn't work today was my poor, poor podcast co-host for our new podcast, Make It Make Sense. Um, he's just really struggling with Wi-Fi. He's got Wi-Fi in his house and Wi-Fi in his guest house. And he just completely cannot seem to get 
a, a decent Zoom connection at all, which is a real problem if we're going to do a weekly um, podcast. But he's just going to have to find somewhere locally that he can go that's got a good internet connection. It's only an hour a week after all, an hour and a half a week. Um, so paying for two Wi-Fi connections that don't work must be excruciating. And he can't even get Starlink going because he's so far out in the country, surrounded by trees. He'd have to get up a, 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 and get his Starlink on a pole 30 feet, foot off the ground, apparently. So I've said to him, look, just get a workman in to do it. Get one of those aerial people in to fix it up for you because it's it's got to be done, really. Um, what else isn't working? Oh, I had a real downer this week with the ever cre creeping closer bird flu narrative they're trying to push on us i mean they're just they're using pcr tests that don't work they're just they just want anything they can do to get people taking more it just puts a real downer on me and uh how did i get out of that i listened to some om music i'm quite getting quite good at meditating just with the breathing thing but i found i listened to some om music on youtube the other day and it really did help to get rid of the anxiety now the problem is when you're running a business that depends entirely on getting onto social media it's hard to avoid the, the doom and gloom stuff that you see when you go on social media so it's a real conundrum for me but the om meditation helped a lot so i'm going to practice that every day now i'm going to do 15 minutes of listening to om um music and it's set the sort of background music's really nice too and just go onto youtube and search om sounds and you'll find some stuff it's really good i like it a lot um what's changing well that's one of the things that's changing doing a 15 minute om meditation every day um the other th two things i've come across this week that you might find of use is i was talking to a potential client and he was saying that he wanted his multi-page website turned into a one-page website and i said what, what why do you want to do that then i said surely it's easier to have it in short pages that people can consume and he said well yeah but i've been watching some of my friends when they say what what's your website and they go to the website and they really like the look of it which is great because i created it for him and but they they keep doing this they don't even think to click the burger at the top they don't even realize what the burger is that it's a menu and i suddenly struck me my god you know when most people are looking at your um website on a mobile or a tablet most people on a mobile to be honest judging by google analytics you'd have to check this go and check your google analytics to see which um, device most people are arriving at your website on if it's a mobile phone then you need to think about this you need to think about getting everything on your page on your front page as obvious as possible so I'm not saying have your entire sales page on your front page. I'm, I'm saying make sure there are very obvious links to go through to find out more onto your, you know, the sales page or the uh, about page or the page that lists their different options. Make sure there's a very obvious link to that on your front page or try and make um, menus that are not going to turn into hamburgers because these Hamburger menus just simply aren't working for the average scroller. They really aren't. You know, they want to scroll down and see it all on one page or at least see links or buttons that they could click to go through and find out more about things. So that's a big revelation I've had this week. And if you've lasted through this um, video, then you've got a massive hot tip there. So the other thing that's changing is um, literally I was watching a thing about this whole YouTube thing last night because I've got a bit more interested in it again. And he was, I was watching um, Judy's husband. Now, anyone who's been remotely interested in vlogging knows about Judy's world. My daughter introduced me to it. She was a makeup vlogger who then turned into a mummy vlogger. And I know that Phoebe was watching it for quite a long time. Anyway, her husband does a podcast on YouTube and he does it with this other chap. And they were talking about this thing. Um, it's a new style of vlogging, which is a lot less um what's the word I'm looking for a lot less it's a lot less edited put it that way it's a lot more casual it's a bit more long form it's it's the kind of thing I watch when I watch my um Portuguese homesteaders and what he was saying was that if you are you're not aiming to get to number to be the number one in your in your category what was the category he was talking about oh he does um cooking a cooking show and he goes off to a what's the big um wholesalers 
we've got one in the UK and I call Costco. Is it Costco? No, it's a wholesaler for the um, hospitality and, and hotel trade. And they go off to these wholesale places. And apparently there are people who make vlogs about it. I mean, I just what are people making videos about nowadays? But anyway, he so he makes he made a vlog that was all about going around the professional wholesalers for his catering business. And saying the kind of bargains you can get, you know, holding up like five litre things of of soy sauce and talking about the uh, the cost savings you can make. But what he was saying was that you do, you're not trying to be the number one. I wish I could remember the name of the damn thing. Let's say it's Costco, but it's not Costco. Um, he was he was saying that he's not trying to be number one vlogger in the Costco category. What he's doing is he's looking to be the video that someone who's watched the number one vlogger and then come away from YouTube, when they come back, YouTube suggests more videos for them to watch based on their previous viewing. And what he's looking to do through search engine optimization techniques, which I can teach you, is to become the one that gets shown the next time, the number two, he called it, when number two visit. He's looking to become the one that gets um, shown suggested when someone comes back and they've previously watched the number one video so I thought that was really interesting so you're going to see um, a big upswing in traffic on your YouTube videos if you make sure they're thoroughly SEO'd and I'm going to go back over my YouTube videos because I've spent quite a lot of time swapping the titles and swapping the thumbnails so I'm not absolutely sure if 100% of them are very very well SEO'd anymore so um, you know I was looking to try and get trying to get attention at the beginning of the of video's life and now what I'm going to do is try and give the video a second life by making sure the SEO is correct on it so that if somebody searches on the topic that's the key thing is each video should be about a specific topic and I'm going to make sure that the SEO on that video is good for that topic and it's about making very niche videos that get shown to people who are interested in that topic not necessarily the first time they come on and look and do a search but the second time when they come back that's what you're looking for yeah that's it what's what's worked quite a bit what hasn't quite a bit and what's changing just the odd one or two things tightly targeted actions that's what we're doing this week so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did and you like the sound of the ai workshop i'll probably do it on a saturday you know it'll be broken up again into uh, learning slots and and taking action slots and then q a slots as well so i think that would be quite a fun thing to do i'll do it on friday or a saturday depending on and if you're if you're interested, just put AI workshop in the bottom and then also put which day you'd prefer, whether it be a Friday or a Saturday. And I'll let you have some information. Speak to you next week. Bye.